All right, guys, well, I'm back today to discuss the pistol brace amnesty period and what to do because that amnesty period is coming to an end. Before I get too far into it, I'm not a lawyer. This is not legal advice. And if you have a device like an AR pistol with a brace, it's best to look at the rule yourself and consult with an attorney if you decide you're going to keep one. Now, what the ATF is wanting you to do is either register that AR pistol as an SBR, which we'll talk about in a second, convert it to a full length rifle with a 16 an inch or longer barrel, which we'll also discuss, or completely remove the pistol brace and destroy it. Those are your only three options other than leaving it on your pistol and hoping that it stays an AR pistol rather than becoming classified as an SBR. Now, the ATF is saying they're not outright banning pistol braces. They are just going to now consider it as a factor when determining if the pistol is actually now become an SBR. Although when looking at the sheets, in my opinion, it looks like almost everything with the pistol brace will now be considered an SBR. There are many other well thought out videos that discuss this in detail, whether it be the legality or technical features. I just wanted to let my viewers know as a service because I've been getting so many questions about this, as well as in-person questions about people wanting to purchase an AR pistol and what that looks like in May of 2023, moving into June of 2023. And at this point, nothing has actually changed. A few court cases have injunctions, but it's only for the specific plaintiffs, and it's not a broad-facing rule change. So this is going to take effect on May 31st, and this is what the ATF suggests you do. The first one we like to talk about earlier, or that we talked about earlier, was simply removing the brace from your AR pistol. This is just a straight tube with a foam cheek protector. At this point, this seems to be okay. Um, but again, I am no legal expert. But they are recommending that you pull off your arm brace and you can keep the shortened barrel length, and this would be considered a traditional AR pistol. So that is one thing. Now, you can't just keep your brace and store it in a closet. They say that's going to be constructive intent, meaning you could go get the brace at any point in time and put it on. Now, this has always been part of the SBR regulations or just our regulations with the NFA in general, meaning if you had an AR pistol with a brace on it, but you also had a stock that was not affixed to something else sitting next to it, that could could also be constructive intent. Again, I am no legal expert, so discuss with your particular lawyer, or you can dig into some other videos from actual lawyers about constructive intent, but the ATF is suggesting you destroy it. The next step is to actually convert that AR pistol into an AR rifle, and then you will be exempt from this rule because now it's no longer an AR pistol or an SBR, it's a full length rifle. Adding a 16 inch or longer upper assembly to your lower moves it out of the pistol class into the rifle class. At this point, you can put a traditional stock on and what you'll have is a 16 inch rifle and you will then um, either keep the brace or destroy it. Um, it doesn't matter at that point because you have a rifle and if it's considered a stock, you're allowed to have a stock on your 16 inch barrel um, gun. So that is something to consider as well if you wanted to follow the ATFs guidelines. Now, I want to make this very clear. I think all of this is a dramatic infringement on our Second Amendment rights. I also want to be clear that the ATF has said these were okay time and time again, and now are changing their mind at the direction at the current administration. So I believe this is all just um, complete and utter nonsense, but I'm making this video because a lot of viewers of mine and a lot of people in person still do not know about this. I don't want somebody who has no idea what's going on showing up at the range June 2nd and now becoming a felon facing up to 10 years in jail and up to a $100,000 fine simply because they didn't understand what was going on. So I'm making this video as kind of like a service and a duty to my viewers to at least help you understand what the ATF wants you to do to be in compliance. Again, hopefully something changes before that deadline, but it doesn't look like it quite at this point, so I want to make this video. The next option is to actually register it as an SBR. What you're looking at here is an SBR I registered prior to the pistol brace ban. This is simply a 10 and a half inch upper assembly on a rifle lower. Now that is filing a form one. A traditional form one can be done on paper or online in the e-forms. And I did this one again before the pistol brace ban because I utilize SBRs. 
I also utilize AR pistols and they're two completely different items when it comes to regulations. And that's why at the time before the rule, I had both. The SBR is definitely something that I utilize on the channel and in real life for a wide variety of applications. And what they've done is granted you an amnesty period to where they're going to allow you to register your AR pistol without paying the normal $200 tax stamp fee from a separate eForms website. And you can submit your fingerprints, all of your personal information, and add your gun to a registry, a nationally kept registry of uh, NFA firearms, and it would be considered an SBR. At that point, since it's an SBR, I believe you're allowed to just swap out that brace with a stock, and you will be good to go after that. Now, that also comes, though, with the regulations and the fact that you have to submit your fingerprints, passport photos, and fill out all that personal information and put your gun on the registry, which opens you up to be checked by the ATF to make sure you still have said gun on the registry at any point in time. Also, there's a lot of rules with barrel length changes. There's also a lot of rules and regulation when it comes to crossing state lines or who can possess it or where you leave it or how it gets fixed. So it's not a simple solution. It's actually a very complicated solution. And I've taken on that with my traditional SBRs before the brace ban. Those are the three options that the ATF is suggesting. What should you do? That is for, for you to decide. Um, um, me personally, I already have SBRs. I already have suppressors. I already have things on the registry. So for somebody like that, this is a dramatic infringement on my rights, not because I would have to register something else for free, but because I utilize AR pistols differently than I utilize SBRs. Sometimes I want my AR pistol to travel across state lines or be considered a handgun so my concealed weapons permit would cover that AR pistol. I am losing those options now for a braced AR pistol, which is incredibly frustrating and again goes against what the ATF has said for years now. So uh, for me, there's a few different routes I'm taking, but I'm not really going to discuss those on camera. This is more of a video just educating on what you guys um, can do to be in compliance with the new ATF rule change. I hope this gives you a ton of information about the rule change because like I said, I've talked to people this week who own these things uh, in person at my place of employment who had no idea this was happening and had no idea that they were going to be felons next week. Imagine that. A law-abiding citizen five years ago buys an AR pistol passes a background check, has stored it safely in their home, has committed no crimes, and as of June 2nd, they'll now be a felon facing up to 10 years in jail and a $100,000 fine. No matter how you cut that down, no matter how you break it down, and no matter what options they give you, those people still didn't know and they'll still be felons June 2nd, and that is why I'm making this video. If not, just to call your state and local representatives and explain the situation and explain the gravity of this new rule change that can converts millions of law-abiding citizens into felons overnight. All of the information I have about this subject will be in the description below. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a good one.